there sure is a lot of talk about mastodons these days. And there are some really interesting developments, especially from a retro computing perspective. And well, my too much gene kicked in and uh, I decided to set up an entire self-hosted server. So I wanted to do this quick little bonus video to introduce it, show you why I really like it and talk about some of the really interesting retro computing related developments around Mastodon. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy the networking part of social networking, just as much as the social part, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Now, if you've been around here for a while, you probably know that one of my favorite things to do is to take very old computers that have no business connecting to the internet and connecting them to the internet. And one of the funny things we like to do once we get them on the internet is to try and load up modern websites like Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. It's always pretty funny to see just how slow they connect to and render these web apps and trying to suffer through minutes long render times to do something stupid like compose and send a tweet. But why are those services so slow on these old machines? There's actually two reasons. First is the obvious one. They're modern web apps versus old web pages and they use heavy modern frameworks that expect gigs of memory and fast multi-core processors. But there's a second one. Modern social media sites they're closed platforms. Enter Mastodon. Unlike those other social media sites out there, Mastodon is open, really open. It's free and open source and built on open web protocols, which means that if you wanted to build a Mastodon client that runs on a system seven or eight Macintosh or DOS, you can do that. And yeah, I decided to build my own Mastodon server because it sounded like it would be a lot of fun. And at first, I was actually gonna build it on a vintage Mac. A Power Mac G5, in fact, running Debian Linux because I've actually compiled all of the dependencies that Mastodon requires before. But then I thought a little better of it and decided that if I'm gonna ask people to sign up to a Mastodon server, I better make sure that their accounts don't suddenly disappear when my G5 crashes. So I decided to build a real server using cloud infrastructure, DigitalOcean and Amazon Web Services and all that fun modern stuff. Though I still might try to run a Mastodon instance from the G5 just for fun. But I think it's important to talk about Mastodon itself first, because I think there are a few misconceptions that may have stopped you from checking it out in the first place. So the first hurdle that I've seen people trip up on is the concept of servers. Like, what do you mean I have to find a server? I can't just go to Mastodon and sign up. However, you're already used to this kind of setup with email. If you want an email account, you can go to Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail or Proton Mail or one of a hundred other email service providers. And it doesn't matter which one you choose. Someone with Gmail can talk to someone with Hotmail and vice versa. And it's the same idea with Mastodon. Whether you sign up on Bitbang or Old Bytes or Metalhead.club, anyone can follow and talk to anyone. But server selection actually influences one of the best features on Mastodon, the local feed. Here, let me show you. Let's start with something a little more modern to actually take a look at Mastodon here. The main home feed here is exactly what you might be used to from something like Twitter. It's all the people you follow from any instance. So I have people from digipress.club and oldbytes.space and all kinds of stuff. I have bot accounts that I follow like Starfleet Jobs and Arcollect. And the best part is these days, tons of people that you probably followed over on the bird site are now on Mastodon as well. But where I think Mastodon gets a little more interesting is the local feed. And this is where it really comes down to choosing a server based around a topic that you're interested in. My server Bitbang is all about retro computing and vintage technology. So if I wanna see just stuff about that, I can look at my local feed and that's what everyone's talking about. And once you discover that, it's a killer feature, but maybe you don't wanna talk about 
strictly retro computing stuff. Maybe you want your local feed to be about hiking or nature or cars or heavy metal. There's probably a Mastodon server out there themed around a topic that you're really interested in. And that's where you should sign up, even if it's not Bitbang, and take a look through some of the other servers on the Mastodon homepage, because there's a lot of stuff out there and it doesn't matter which of these you actually sign up for, because you can follow people on every other server out there. And then the other killer feature on Mastodon is the federated timeline, which is a timeline made up of people that you probably don't follow, but other people on your server do. So if you want to discover something new, instead of talking about whatever your server is themed around, you can pop on the federated timeline and see all kinds of new stuff. And this organization, it's just so much better than Twitter. I mean, Twitter was just a constant feed of everything, just shoved in front of your face. And there was some black box algorithm trying to determine what you wanted to see. Here, there's three tabs, home, local, federated, with three different ways to discover and talk to people. Not to mention the extreme openness where you can just build your own Mastodon front end. And in fact, there are a ton of projects out there. For example, Brutaldon, you can have a web 1.0 styled Mastodon experience here, and you could probably use this through an old browser. Now, running my own Mastodon server that's open to users isn't actually that cheap. So here's a quick word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. Can you believe that this is the fifth year that PCBWay has run their annual PCB design contest? You can submit your own creations and designs for a chance at a bunch of really cool prizes. I'll link that down below. Also, PCBWay offers way more than just PCBs. There's 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and much more. I hope we give PCBWay.com a try. So I have a bunch of ideas to cover some interesting Mastodon related retro computing stuff on this channel, including projects like Maxtodon, which is what I alluded to with this color classic here, and Dostodon, which is a DOS based Mastodon client that actually shows images and everything and supposedly works on as little as a 386. So I hope you'll follow me at Bitbang. It's Action Retro at bitbang.social and feel free to sign up for my bitbang.social Mastodon server. Especially if you're really interested in talking about vintage computers all the time. Or sign up for one of the other tons of Mastodon servers around all kinds of varied interests. But that'll do it for this quick ad hoc bonus video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah, if you want to see more kind of off the cuff ad hoc videos like this interspersed in the normal video schedule, let me know in the comments down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Camilla Noseda, Chris Algreta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retrotech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Hunt K Mods, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, and Sutek who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.